Hey guys, uh, today I'll be recovering what's inside of this box. Looking at the box and the packaging, I can tell that the unit was sent to Drive Savers. But for some reason, what's inside of this box was not recovered. So let's have a look at what we got. We have two very interesting looking uh, devices. So these boxes pretty much plug into uh, this bay, but they can also be uh, used individually with the help of uh, individual USB cable. Since there's two of them, I assume that the one with the yellow sticker uh, is a functional device and the one with the red sticker is the one that needs work. So let's open it up and see what this device is and what can we do with it. To open it up, we need a flathead screwdriver and uh, around the edge, there are a few clips, very easily uh, comes apart, especially if it's already been removed. And then you can see that drive savers did remove it in the past. What do we have inside? Inside it's a Silicon Motion 2246XT controller, which is used for a lot of solid state uh, devices these days that runs off of four uh, NAND chips. Over here we got a bunch of uh, uh, through holes right here. Uh, those vehicles can be used to uh, put the device into a safe mode. I would assume that the two furthest ones are for the safe mode activation. And that should give us uh, access to the controller. So let's uh, get this on the table and see what's going on. Compare a few things to a working device and see if we can maybe track down a couple of leads why this thing is not working. To help me work with this device, I'm going to use DeepSparse USB stabilizer. Uh, to uh, check a couple of things. This is the cable that we're going to plug in. First, we're going to plug it into um, to a donor device. And I uh, just want to see, I think we're going to use this adapter just to see um, how many amps it's going to draw, uh, just so that we know that that's what the control unit should be drawing, right? So power up. And we can see it's taking in about uh, 270 milliamps. If we go on to um, our studio up here, you can see that it says clearly Lexar workflow. And if we go into the specs, we can see that it's 500 gigs. So it's a 500 gigabyte SSD and it's drawing 270 milliamps. That's good. So um, we can actually just verify that it gets us data to see the data uh, by going into hex for you. That's the safest way. Yeah, the data is there. We are done with the uh, donor. We can just go ahead into our control panel, power down our device. Let's go ahead and power it up. Now we can see that it's drawing only 110 instead of 270. And if we go into the log, it doesn't show that the device is mounted. We see that the uh, uh, workflow device is no longer active. Because it seems like there's something on the board that is um, not working. Um, I'm going to check and compare uh, what output we are getting uh, for the power related modules here and see if we can actually trace it down to a specific component that may be creating this issue. Also, something tells me that the controller itself might be a little bit of a troublemaker here just because I know these SM controllers and how they bond to the board and sometimes they do like to uh, separate a little bit. That can be checked out underneath the microscope and once we get it underneath the microscope uh, we'll be able to trace it a bit more and see what's going on. So a couple of things I wanted to check right away. 
and the uh, number one thing is how do those pads look underneath the controller because before going into uh, um, redoing all four chips for the memory swap which would be a short bet in many cases um, I still think that if we can narrow it down to a problem that it related to the uh, controller it will save us a lot of time a lot of headache because if it's something as simple as disconnected controller and that is probably the reason why we're not getting our safe mode. Set it from far, let it warm up the board, warm up the area. You can see that flux is starting to get more liquidy. But this is a small component. couple of things to get slightly off track here You see these dots here? They're so dull that they almost look like when removing this component we broke them off. You see they have no shine to them whatsoever. Only when we scrape them a little bit they begin to shine. What's, what we're gonna do next is going to bring, pretty much bring all the um, oxidation out of this device on connection pads out and uh, we should see nice little shiny soldering spheres half spheres I should say in place of those pads this component is uh, thick and some of these pads like ground pads that uh, went bad um, sometimes do need quite a bit of work to clean them up. got this uh, slant that's the pin one and it also indicated by that dot right there on the chip we're just gonna move it over there
now at 350 and 40 air I'm gonna gently cook its way in yeah it's good now to me it looks like these balls are a bit shinier the board is still quite warm components are really hot still I'm gonna let it cool for like a minute it's uh, let it soak up some of the cold from this mat uh, this board is cooling off fast My micro SD ran out of space, and um, basically I got defeated. I can't, I, I can't figure out what, what's uh, going on. There's too many components. In order for me to trace one, I have to move one that is that I, that I found was bad from the working device to a failed device, and then compare the readings. It's too much going back and forth. I said slate. Let's cut it short. Uh, Reboiling the chips now and uh, once that's done I'm gonna go and remount them to the donor PCB Chip one and chip two mounted. Hmm. All right, let's try this. Let it cool and uh, gonna give it a try. Well, the chips are sitting nice. The chips are sitting very nice. Okay, I'm getting impatient here. I wanna give it a try. Let's go. Yo! We have some LEDs. Oh, the magic number. 270 and if we look over here my dear friends we got ourselves a work flow Lexar partition wait for it X fat wait for it 476 so there is our magical partition one we we'll go into view and edit that's actually accessible content right there.
following morning, uh, the unit is still working, still running strong. Uh, just finished up saving all of the content overnight. There was quite a bit, so I left it running overnight. If we look at the stats from our studio, there was about 330 gigs of content. So now that the data is safely transferred to a brand new hard drive, it's time to pack it up and send it back to the Dominican Republic. I honestly uh, uh, wish I was going <laughs> together with that package for a couple of weeks at least. Just doing the recap right now, there are just a couple of things I would have changed uh, knowing how this procedure is gonna go. I would have probably not go after trying to repair it if I knew how long it's gonna take. Uh, I thought I had it solved once I found that failed component. I thought that was it but then there was something else in line and uh, for me to trace other parts, what else could be in line, I had to constantly bring the donor back to work and then compare the readings on the failed unit. So going back and forth with that component, I just got fed up with it. The next thing is uh, my fume extractor. So when I have it set up for soldering and it's running, I have to have the exhaust coming out of the window and the window always has a screen on it. So in order for me to put the exhaust, I have to take the screen out. It was late at night my ring light is on. I feel like these things in my neck and my back of my head and then my shoulder. I'm like, what is that? And now I'm like itching and scratching myself. I see this mosquito just flying by and I'm like, okay, that's it. <laughs> Nan swap, call in the Nan swap. Uh, I wish I brought my preheater home because that would have made the work much, much quicker and more efficient. I wouldn't have to heat up the board so much. For the donor, I had it set at 390 temperature and uh, 120 air. And it would literally take like three minutes for the chip to come off. It was, it's, I was feeling so bad for that memory component. And as soon as I bumped it up to 420, uh, the chip came out maybe in like 40 seconds. It didn't have any negative effect on the, on the outcome. The data is all flawless. It's running well. As always, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. This was fun. I hope you learned something new and interesting. And if you did, uh, definitely smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Don't forget about the notification button that looks like a bell. It will let you know when the next video drops. And if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. Even if it's uh, to say hello and it's very nice out, I'll be glad to hear that. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next episode.